Has your cat just been diagnosed with chronic kidney disease and you're staring at those lab values going, what does this mean? You're not alone. I'm going to walk you through six important numbers on your cat's blood work. BUN, creatinine, SDMA, phosphorus, potassium, and HCT or hematocrit. You'll learn what they actually mean, why they matter, and how to track them over time without needing a medical degree. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Dr. Emily, and this channel is dedicated to helping you take the best care of your senior kitty. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss a thing, and like and share the video so I can create more content like it. If you're overwhelmed, frustrated, or confused when your vet starts talking about blood work results, it may help to remember that when we went to school, we had an entire class dedicated to interpreting blood results, maybe more depending on where they went to school. Add to that physiology and pathology, and it gets complex real fast. It's no wonder you may be feeling a little bit lost. Honestly, I half-heartedly joke that I spent four years learning how to speak like a veterinarian, and now I'm spending the rest of my career trying to figure out how to translate it back into English. Before we dive into each of these numbers, here's why blood work is so important to CKD. The kidneys are responsible for filtering waste from the blood and keeping essential minerals and fluids in balance. When the kidneys start to fail, those waste products build up, and that's when we see changes in the lab values. Now, let's break each one down into English. Let's start with the big two, creatinine and BUN. These are waste products that the kidneys usually filter out of the body. Creatinine comes from muscle metabolism. When it rises above normal, it can be a sign that the kidneys aren't doing their job. But there's some catches to creatinine. It only starts to rise after significant kidney damage is done, so it's a lagging indicator. Oftentimes, you'll hear people say, my cat has 75% damage to their kidneys. It's a rough guess, but that's kind of what we're talking about. Creatinine rises towards the later stages of kidney damage. Another catch is that when creatinine and BUN climb together, it's something called azotemia. Azotemia isn't necessarily specific to the kidneys. This high creatinine and BUN can happen with heart disease, infections, and urinary obstructions, just to name a few. BUN itself, measures nitrogen in the blood from protein breakdown. Elevated BUN can mean reduced kidney function, but it can also spike if your cat is dehydrated or even when they're on a high protein diet. So it's important to always interpret the BUN along with the creatinine, but keeping in mind that that azotemia combination isn't always 100% specific for kidney disease. Think of these two like the tip of the iceberg. They're visible signs that tell you it is time to start digging deeper. They're also a good example of how a lab value cannot be interpreted by itself. At least most of them can't. It's very rare that we will look at a blood panel, see one number that has changed and get concerned about it. When we've got BUN and creatinine elevated, we've got azotemia. Another example of this is anemia. Anemia is considered a decrease in the hematocrit or HCT, the hemoglobin or HGB, and red blood cell indicators. We need further indicators yet to potentially tell us what type of anemia that we're dealing with. But that's why this gets so complicated and confusing so quickly, is it's not just one lab value we're dealing with, it's a number of lab values and the animal in front of us. But back to the topic at hand. Let's talk about SDMA. This is a newer test, and it's considered to be much more sensitive to the kidneys themselves. In theory, it can detect kidney dysfunction when as little as 25% of kidney function is lost, well before the creatinine even starts to rise. And while there's other things that can affect the SDMA, when it starts to climb, it's definitely time to dig deeper, even if the creatinine looks normal. If you catch chronic kidney disease early because of an elevated SDMA, that's actually good news. It means you have time to adjust your cat's care and potentially slow the disease process. Another blood value to consider is phosphorus. Phosphorus is a mineral that builds up in the blood when the kidneys stop filtering appropriately. High phosphorus can contribute to nausea, poor appetite, and it can actually progress the damage already done to your cat's kidneys. If your cat's phosphorus value is climbing, it's time to look at nutrition, phosphate binders, or potentially both. This particular value can make a huge difference in your cat's comfort. We also watch potassium. Potassium imbalances in CKD cats are super common. 
and it can go both ways. We may have high potassium, we may have low potassium. Low potassium or hypokalemia is more common. This can lead to muscle weakness, poor appetite, and constipation. On the flip side, that high potassium, hyperkalemia, this is less common, but actually considered more dangerous because it can affect heart function. And while we wanna track the other values that I have already talked about, potassium is one that if we're watching it, we tend to be tracking it a lot closer. So we are checking blood work more frequently. It can shift quickly depending on hydration, medications, and supplements. Last but not least, let's talk about the HCT, or the hematocrit. This is a measure of red blood cells. And why does this matter? Chronic kidney disease cats often develop anemia. This anemia develops because their kidneys stop producing the hormone that is needed to trigger the body to produce the red blood cells. A normal hematocrit is usually between 30 and 45. It's certainly helpful if you have trends of your own cat's normal hematocrit prior to them developing chronic kidney disease. But if you don't, that good target range, again, 30 to 45% usually. Many CKD cats will fall below 30. And we know below 30, we can have clinical signs of anemia. If your cat's hematocrit is dropping, it can explain fatigue, cold sensitivity, and lethargy. Your veterinarian might recommend B12 injections, iron, Varenzin CA1, or even hormone therapy, depending at the level of the decrease in that hematocrit. I know this can feel like a lot, and I'm gonna keep this video on the shorter side because I don't wanna overwhelm you. So here's the takeaways, but here's the takeaway. These lab values are tools. When you understand them, you can ask better questions. When you ask better questions, you can better advocate for your cat and track their progress with confidence. So again, those values were creatinine and BUN, which together equal azotemia, and our kidney waste levels. SDMA, which is a much earlier detector. Phosphorus, essentially we're doing damage control with this one. Potassium, which should make you think muscle and heart health. And hematocrit, which equals energy and anemia. If you're finding chronic kidney disease to be confusing and stressful, like this video and subscribe to the channel for more videos that support you and your sweet senior kitty.